Hey guys, how's it going today? It's me, Captain Energy. Today, I wanted to show you a neat trick for getting your beats to match up in tempo with your song. Uh, this video was requested by a Reddit user who was having an issue with this pro this on his song where his uh, loops were slipping out of time eventually. Um, and that can happen if they're not properly mapped out. But I'm going to show you how to do that so that I can help him out and also help you out if you run into this if you like this kind of content by the way don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel i do this all the time about once a week i put out a new video um all right this is what i'm going to call the janky loop and the reason i call this the janky loop is i cut this thing all crazy so that it would not start on time it would not end on time it's all all kinds of you know broke I'm going to turn off disable or, or uh, I'm going to disable stretch on this. So this comes in at its normal size. Now, as you can see, just looking at this real quick, if I turn the snap off, it would bring this right here. That's about lined up right now. Uh, you'll notice that this is a kick right here, a kick, which is should be here. Then we have a kick right here, which would normally be here at three. And then this kick should be at three and a half. Uh, and none of that is happening here. And actually, in reality, let's see here. Yeah, this is all kinds of wrong because this this loop is 128 beats a minute, but the song is 100 beats a minute. So this is actually supposed to be four four measures or four bars rather. Cross right over here, okay. Uh, so 16 measures, but as you can see, it's not. How do we fix this, right? Oh, well, let me show you. It's not that bad. Okay. First, what we want to do is want to go inside of the loop. Double click it. And once we're inside, I'm going to just zoom in a little more over here. And I'm going to take this and give us a little more room. All right. And now I'm going to click the sound and I'm going to click slice edit. What slice edit's going to do is it's going to go into the sound and it's going to add all these little hit markers. And the hit markers, what they do is they tell you when an instrument was struck. So whenever like a kick was struck, I'm going to get the speaker for a second to show you. If I go in here and play that little piece, that's the one hit that happened right there. Now this can be very handy. Also, if you're looking to sample, uh, just like this kick, you want, you want this kick, right? You want to make, you making a drum kit. I can go in here and I can just grab my arrow. And if I right click on this little hit marker right there and hit slice that, and now we'll do it right after the kick right there. Split it slices again. And now I take this little piece right here, right click it and hit bounce. To a new sample, right? Bounce clip to new sample. Boom. It gets added to my sample library. I could then go over here, bring in a sampler. Go to my sounds, song samples, unassigned samples. And there it is, this little one right here instead of all self-contained samples, all right? We'll go up here, I'm going to reset this. And we're just going to bring it in as a normal sample. And now... There's my sample mapped across my keyboard. 
I can make a drum kit with it. I could use it as a regular instrument. I can do whatever I want with it at this point. Now, that's not what we're here to learn, but I figured I'd just throw that in as like a little extra, a little extra bonus. Okay. I'm going to delete this. I don't need that piece here. Delete this. That's just junk. Now, what we're looking for, though, is to get this loop to map, right? <clears throat> so let's go back into the sample here. Again, there are the hit markers. Right now, as it stands, right here is the first sound in the loop. This is the kind of the fill at the end of the loop uh, or the, the bit of the loop before what we want to cut. Here's the beginning. So I'm going to go right here. I'm going to select this one, right click it, split it slices. Okay. Go inside again. And now what I'm going to do is I'm, I know what I want basically is that it's a four measures, right? And I know that this is one measure from here to here. Here's another kick from here to here. That's a second from here to here. That's a third from here to here. That's a fourth. So we want to slice right here. I'm going to right click, split it slices. Boom. And now I'm going to take the piece after it. I'm going to delete that. I don't need it. It's just junk, right? Piece before it, delete that too. Gone. What's left? What's left is one perfect loop. Now it's perfect in the sense that if you listened to it, which I'm going to do this and copy it, I'm going to paste another one right here. Hear that? It's perfect, right? Maps right to itself, and it, as far as we're concerned, it's great. But now let's listen to it against the click track. Not even close, right? How do we fix that? It's very easy. Delete this second instance here. We don't need it right now. If I go right here, click the, the sample that I've got, and I hold down Control, and I hover my mouse over the very, this arrow right at the end here, you'll see this little clock show up. On Mac, by the way, it's Command, okay? PC, Control. Hover your little right there, and you'll notice this little clock. Now with that clock, you can stretch this sample out. Now, I could take this and go, uh, you know, whatever, something giant and go. Now that's a little ridiculous. We don't want that, right? But what we do to get it to map properly, since we want one, two, three, four, we want it to come to right here to the beginning of 3.1. Okay. Let's turn snap on. Be sure it's on. It may be on already on your machine. I'm not sure. Hold down control or command on Mac. Like I said, now drag this over here. It will snap right to it. If I play this now, Do you hear that? Let me get this uh, loop marker right here. Bring this over here. And we can do it again. I'm going to just, now it's going to loop. Turn it off, click. And it's perfectly mapped, right? Now, if we want to make sure that this stays perfectly mapped, what we can do next is I'll right click this and I'm going to hit bounce in place. What this is going to do is it's going to render a brand new audio file right beneath this one, except that this one is mapped to the tempo of the song. Now, what this does for you is now you've got a loop that can easily stretch to meet the needs of the song. So now if I change the tempo of the song to say 120, or if I take the song and go to 80,
that's that. Now I'm deleting the other piece. We don't need that anymore. And we don't need this sample. That was just a whole little other little experiment. All right. So now we've got this. And if I take this and if I want that, I duplicate this, I could just paste it in a million times. And it's always going to be, as you can see, as I'm pasting it in, it's always going to be right on, right on the measure, right? Well, that's great. Now, what if I want to go further with this than what I've done so far? How can I go further with it? Well, there we go. We've already got this in here in the way that we're using it, right? We're good. We have a sample that we could just paste in. But what if we want to be able to kind of chop this up a little bit? Um, there's a bunch of ways to chop it up. Some would be to actually physically sit here. And uh, now that we've got it in there, I could take this and throw my uh, my cut points at 16ths, okay? And now I could just go right over here. I could snap, you know, cut this thing up, and I could take this piece out, and maybe I don't like that first kick, which I kind of actually don't like the first kick. Um, yeah, I could go like this and uh, get rid of that, and then bring this over here and hold down control, drag that over there, and, and it would just snap right in. And now we'd have... you know, slightly different edit, whatever. Uh, I mean, if I wanted to, I could take that and maybe I want to make it um, even more different. I mean, I want to take this and drop a double kick in right here. Whatever, you know, you can slice it up any way you want. But if you want to do it more dynamically than that, you don't want to actually sit here and cut pieces up, you want to find a quick way to do this, right? We want to find the most efficient way to work. <clears throat> well, here's a very efficient way to work. If I double click this and go in again to slice edit mode, okay, and right click this, and now rather than chop it up manually, I hit bounce and I go right over here to a Rex loop. What this is going to do is it's going to make this See this little blue symbol here? It says Janky Loop 2. All right. Now I'm going to mute these guys because we're not going to use this. And I'm going to add another instrument here. The instrument I'm going to add is a Dr. Octorex player. Okay. Drop that right there. Go over here. I'm going to right click on the file and reset this unit so there's no software, no sounds inside of it right now. Now let's go to the song samples unassigned samples and see there's janky loop this is it the one that we just made i'm going to bring this over here and drop it in, in slot one you have eight slots to load things in here okay and if i just hit run it will play the loop and the loop is going to be mapped out to whatever bpm we're at What's actually happening here is the loop was sliced at every single one of those hit markers into an individual sample. And then Reason is triggering each sample as though it were playing them on a keyboard, which you can in fact do yourself. So you could actually sit here and Play your sounds um, and create loops with those sounds. You could play the instruments yourself, or you could go over here. And if I take this and turn off enable loop playback, right, and go to copy loop to track, what Reason does for me is it takes all of the sounds that are happening and measures them out for however long they're playing, whatever, and triggers them on beat, makes all the little notes right here to trigger them. Now, the cool part about this is that you can 
let reason be the one controlling things, or you can take it into your own hands. And what I mean by that is, for example, I could take this uh, right here, and I could bring this up here, and then I could take this guy right here, and I could drag this down. Sorry about the noise. Right there, okay. Maybe I want a double clap right here instead of a single clap. So you can chop up your samples this way very easily. Um, and it can be used for a lot of really creative reasons. Uh, no pun intended. Anyway, I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, this is basically, that was basically the video. So if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you thought of the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for this video and for more content like this. Again, I release videos once, sometimes twice a week, depending on the demand for new videos. So have an awesome day, go make some music, and I'll see you next time. Bye.